Welcome to Web Art Academy. In this video lesson, you will discover the method of oil painting, which is essential to the traditional oil painting technique. It is called glazing. In Europe, the method of glazing was used and perfected from the 14th through the 19th century. The majority of masterpieces done by the great masters feature glazing layers. It was a very important technique, and every fine artist of that time knew and used it. In this video lesson, you will find out what glazing is, why it is so important for the traditional oil painting technique, and how you can use it. Before we begin, allow me to say a few words about the Web Art Academy course, where you will find even more information on this topic. My name is Vladimir London, and together with Natalie Ricci, we have created the Web Art Academy video course. In this course, you can watch fine art video lessons that reveal, step by step, the full process of artwork creation. We reveal to you the almost forgotten skills of classical painting and drawing. Natalie Ricci, the Academy's tutor, presents video lessons and shows you oil paintings, created right in front of your eyes, so you can learn by watching the professional fine artist in action. This course is available for you on a monthly subscription basis, or you can get all of the video lessons at once. It offers truly remarkable content, 12 high-quality video lessons that are as good as sitting next to the fine artist in real life. There are also numerous bonuses and video demonstrations. Included in the course are 24 fine art books, which you can enjoy reading online or download to your computer. Later on in this video, I will advise you on how you can get the full benefit from the Web Art Academy course and video lessons on offer. Now let's continue with the glazing topic. Glazing in oil painting is the technique of applying very thin and transparent or semi-transparent layers of oil paint over the dry surface of a painting. Glazing is used to enhance, change, or deepen the colors of the painting. The glaze is a transparent or semi-transparent layer of paint, which is thinly spread over the top of a dry oil paint surface. When light penetrates through the top glaze layer, it reflects from the surface of the layer underneath and bounces back so the viewer can see that layer. As transparent glaze has its own color, it changes the appearance of the lower layer. The color of the painted surface becomes deeper and richer. Such reflected light through one or more transparent glazing layers can produce some light diffusion and glow. The glazing technique is a very laborious and slow process. However, the results which it provides are not achievable by any other means of oil painting. The full benefits of glazing layers are achieved in oil painting. Acrylic, for example, would not provide the same benefits. Not every oil paint is suited for glazing. Those paints that are transparent or semi-transparent are best suited for glazing. Opaque paints have strong covering properties and therefore can be used with caution, if used at all, for the purpose of glazing. The glazing method is based on the ability of colors to mix optically and change their appearance when two or more colors are applied. The knowledge of optical mixing of colors cannot be underestimated here. When one color is covered with another layer of transparent oil paint with a different color, the hue changes its appearance. This appearance is not achievable by physical mixing of oil paints used. Very complex and deep colors can be achieved in this way. It takes some knowledge and experience to predict these results. Glazing method is used for several purposes. It is used to change the chroma, value, and hue of colors. It can deepen the color tones, add a visual depth to the painting, change the texture of the painting to a glossy surface, unite various color patches in one harmonic range, soften up edges and contours. Usually, glazing layers are used to finish the painting. In the previous Web Art Academy video on the topic of underpainting, dead colors and grise, we described the methods used by the old masters to start the painting. Some of the old masters were using glazing on top of underpainting or dead colors. Others would continue the painting with body colors before finishing it with glazing. White paints are not used for glazing purposes. That is why the glazing process always goes from light tones to dark tones. Every glazing layer is applied after a previous layer is dry. Drying time depends on the thickness and type of oil paint, as well as the oil medium used in the glaze. Usually paints are diluted with mediums to increase the transparency of the glazing layer. The glazing technique is often used for portraying the complexity of skin tones. Human skin, for example, is not 100% opaque, so flesh and blood under the skin gives the complexity of the skin's colors. Such skin effect rendering can be achieved by the glazing method. The great masters sometimes used cold colors for the underpainting of figurative artworks. Such cold colors underpainting is often called the dead layer. When finishing portraits in warm glazing, artists were able to mix optically cold and warm hues, getting very realistic skin rendering otherwise not achievable by mixing paints on a palette. When multiple layers of glazes are used, the color of each layer will contribute to the overall gamut of the painted surface. 
A fine artist can use several glaze layers. The number of layers depends on a particular creative task, as well as the personal preference of the artist. Every time a new glaze layer is applied, the painted surface's appearance is changed. The pigments of paints are not intermixed because the previous layer is dry before actually applying a new one, but the glaze colors contribute to the colorful gamut optically. As for any multi-layer oil painting technique, the glazing method must be used according to the fat over lean rule. To minimize cracking of the painting surface, every new layer of oil paint needs to contain more oil or be fatter than the layer below. One of the first masters who developed the oil painting method with use of glazed layers was Jan van Eck. This discovery gave a big advantage to oil painting over the old tempera painting. With glazing, it becomes possible to depict the smallest variations of colors and tone gradations, which was the revolutionary invention at the time. Never before had the world seen such vibrant and defined colors produced by artists. Other artists of North Renaissance, like Roger van der Weyden, Hugo van der Goes, Hans Melming, and Peter Bruegel, the elder, were developing glazing painting methods even further. From the Netherlands masters, the glazing method was then passed on to Italian fine artists. The Italian method was as follows. After transferring a drawing on the painting's support and outlining it in paints, it was glazed in several layers, first in cold colors, then in warm colors, which were required. Sometimes, the white ground of the canvas or board was covered with a thin, flesh-colored imprimatura layer. The painting method of the small Dutch pictures of the 17th century often featured a cold, gray background, which was partially visible through many upper layers of glazing. The old masters were always paying great attention to the clarity of glazed layers. Thick impasto layers came into use at a much later time. The Flemish fine artists of the 17th and 18th centuries were using red and brown grounds for their paintings. Michelangelo Marisi de Caravaggio, 1573-1610, was one of the fine artists to use dark, almost black grounds. Later on, academic painters were combining thick layers of body paint with upper layers of glazing. Lights were painted in thick, opaque paint mix, or sometimes in glazes over a white underpainting. Shadows were painted over neutral tones. Such complicated painting methods, Italian term pentimenti, provides great flexibility and is based on the revealing of a painting, or part of a painting, that has been covered over by later layers. The glazing technique is suitable for many genres of oil painting. However, in portraiture, it works particularly well, because transparent glazed layers depict human skin realistically and believably. Glazing is also well suited for cases when a colorful gamut of an artwork needs to be united in a certain hue direction. For example, a still life object may have many colors, and all those different colors visually divide this object. So to bring it together, the fine artist may apply one or several layers of glazing to unify the common shape of the object. Landscapes can also benefit from the glazing technique. For example, a lake is painted so its color appears too cold. The fine artist may decide to cover the entire lake area in an orange-yellowish glaze to make it look warmer. Covering areas in gray-blue glazing will make an object look colder. When glazing, one would approach it in the same manner as one would when painting in watercolor. The fine artist would start from a light area and work their way toward a dark area. Changing colors with glazes is a common approach in traditional oil painting. For example, neutral gray can change its appearance to red when a transparent layer of crablac is applied on top. The same neutral gray can go blue when covered with ultramarine glaze. When painting in oil, you need to be aware of a paint's transparency. If you're unsure of a particular paint transparency, look on the tube label to check transparency marks. Colors that are marked with a white square or the character T are transparent. Paints marked with a white square, which is crossed diagonally, or have the characters ST, are semi-transparent. The semi-opaque colors are marked with a square, which is divided diagonally in black and white, or labeled with an SO mark, while opaque paints have a black square or the character O on the label. In general, lighter colors and those made of earth pigments tend to be opaque and semi-opaque, while dark colors more often would be transparent and semi-transparent. If paint is diluted well, almost any color could be suited for glazing. Here are some transparent colors. Alizarin, Sap, Ultramarine, Indian Yellow, to name a few. Many dye colors, for example, Phthalo and Quinocridone, are transparent as well. The glazing technique works well with impasto layers. When well-diluted paint is applied on top of an impasto layer, the glaze will flow into it, deepening the painting's surface as it reveals its rough texture. Many artists use the glazing technique without realizing they're doing so. These artists might think that because they're not working in the traditional multi-layer technique, they do not use glazing. 
In fact, when a very thin layer of diluted paint is applied on the painting surface, if the underlayer is visible underneath, it is a glazing technique. Proficient fine artists know this method well and use it to its full advantage. The traditional multi-layer oil painting technique consists of three main steps, underpainting, body colors, and glazing. In real life, this classical approach can have many variations and exceptions. For example, sometimes artists were not satisfied with body layers and continued with underpainting on top, once again to cover and fix an image, instead of finishing it with glazing. In other cases, artists continued with body colors on top of glazes. Real life often alters the classical way of painting, so artists experimented with layers and glazes. Only practice will help you master the glazing technique. Underpainting can be done in oil or even tempera. Some of the old masters, especially in the early Northern Renaissance, were using tempera paints for underpainting. Tempera has the advantage of quick drying. However, it is not elastic enough for pictures on canvas and therefore works the best on painting in wooden boards. The glazing method works the best for altering the color or tonal values of the picture in cases when no changes are required to the subject or composition. The glazing layer can be applied with a brush, while some artists may use their hand to wipe off the excess paint and to spread the paint evenly across a big area of the painting. Every time a new layer of glazing is applied, the surface of the painting will become darker as less light will reflect and bounce back from the layers underneath. This fact needs to be considered beforehand as underlayers made lighter than intended make an appearance in the finished artwork. As the painting surface becomes darker with glazes, some artists paint highlights and lights with light oil paint over the glaze while it is still wet. Applying lighter color brush strokes over the glaze gives a soft edge to strokes. If highlights are too bright, the artist can use a glazing on top once again when the paint is dry. Any excess glaze can be taken off with the fingers or the hand. In the majority of cases, proficient fine artists don't apply similar hue colors for glazes. For example, blue glaze over a light blue surface, or red over pink. Instead, they use harmonic color combinations, which gives a one-step shift on the color spectrum. For example, blue color can be applied over green, green over yellow, yellow over orange, and so on. Glazing on top of dark underpainting reduces brightness even further. For example, ultramarine applied on top of burnt sienna will result in a deep, dark tone. When it comes to diluents for glazes, stand oil can be used. Oil varnishes are often used for diluting glaze mix. Varnish can be mixed with good drying oils. An excess of oil is not desired, as it can lead to the painted surface yellowing and darkening, which affects the colorful appearance of the artwork. The advantage of the glazing method is that an infinite variety of colors can be created without intermixing oil paints together. Some oil paints can change their colors as a result of a chemical reaction among mixed pigments. Such a chemical reaction will not happen when oil paints are mixed visually, since every layer is completely dry before a new one is applied. Paintings done in the glazing technique are preserved very well throughout many centuries, while the colors of many later artworks change severely due to discoloration or color changes. The glazing technique goes very well in combination with Griselle. When working in Griselle, fine artists concentrate on depicting light and shades portraying the three-dimensional nature of objects and environment. Griselle often painted in tints and brown on gray paints. Deciding on your colors comes later and can be done in glazes. As a rule, the fine artist uses two main methods of making monochrome underpainting. The first method is painting in transparent layers, when the tonality depends upon the paint dilution degree. The second method is based on opaque layers, where mid-tones and lights are achieved by adding white paint to the mix. This gives a thicker underpainting compared to the first one. Sometimes the fine artist may use a combination of these two methods in one underpainting. These two methods are good for pictures on toned backgrounds. Using semi-transparent and transparent layers, the fine artist can work on mid-tones and shadows. On the other hand, by using the opaque method, it is possible to work on mid-lights and lights. The artwork completed in monochrome griselle can be a finished painting within its own right. Such pictures often resemble a black and white photograph executed in oil paints. Griselle underpaintings were usually done in brown colors or neutral gray. The old masters used griselle on its own, as well as preparatory oil sketches, and most often as underpainting. There are certain rules which need to be observed when working with the glazing technique. It is possible to finish in glazing any given artwork. However, the best results are achieved when the picture is purposely prepared to be finished in glazing. Prepared for glazing artwork must be done in lighter and colder tones than the intended result will be. Glazing layers will darken the painting surface and also shift the hue values in the warmer direction. It is important to use a clean brush for glazing. If some opaque paint is left on the brush, it can pollute the clear glaze transparency. 
When a glazing layer is applied, it is better to leave the artwork for a while to let the diluents evaporate before touching the glaze with a clean brush to even it out or spread even further. Natural hog bristle brushes are good for glaze application. Small details are better to glaze with small soft brushes, while bigger areas can be glazed with flat rounded brushes in bigger sizes. Here are 10 rules that will help you to master the glazing technique. 1. Use oils with a higher viscosity for diluting glaze mix. 2. A single color glaze can be used, as well as a mix of two or more colors. 3. Glazes can be used for increasing the color saturation, as well as calming it down. 4. Lighter and more transparent glazes require lighter underlayers. When glazing on dark underlayers, it is only possible to achieve a dark and deep glaze. 5. Multiple glaze layers can be applied in one artwork. Keep in mind that multitude transparent layers will absorb the light, making the artwork darker. 6. An even application of diluted glaze can be achieved by using a soft brush, silk cloth, hand, and so on. Glazes with a higher viscosity can be applied with stiffer hog brushes. 7. Every layer of glaze must be dry before applying the next one. 8. Artwork can get darker with time if too much oil was used for glazes. 9. A glaze layer can be wiped off if required before it dries. 10. White paint is never added to transparent glazes. It blemishes the pure transparency badly. Glazing can be applied on a smooth surface, as well as textured underlayer. Depending on the underlayer texture, the result will appear differently. Rougher textures can become even more textured looking. The fine artist must keep in mind that areas of a painting made in glazes will look closer to the viewer than an opaque layer of paint. This is because the light reflects differently from the opaque layer than when it travels through one or several layers of glaze. According to this rule, the artist tends to paint in glazing those objects that are on the foreground, leaving the background opaque. That is why the sky looks more believable and realistic when painted opaque, without glazing. Semi-transparent glazing plays a very important role in oil painting. Such glazing is done in oil paints that are semi-opaque or diluted opaque paints. Application of semi-transparent glazes has an interesting effect. When light semi-transparent glaze is applied on dark underlayer, the color will look lighter and colder than the underlayer. When the same light, semi-transparent glaze is placed on top of a white underlayer, a darker and warmer tint will be achieved. Using this method, the old masters were able to achieve gray midtones in figurative paintings by applying semi-transparent light paints over dark brown underpainting. Colorful tones of semi-transparent glazes produce colors that otherwise are not achievable by mixing up oil paints on a palette. Contemporary artists often use semi-transparent and semi-opaque glazes. They are not necessarily fully knowledgeable about how glazing works, but may instead apply it accidentally or intuitively. Now I will give you some examples of great masters who use the glazing technique with perfection. Here is an example of an unfinished painting by Jan van Eyck. St. Barbara is from the Antwerp Museum. Here we can see how this artist achieved great results in making a sepia underpainting. This painting is quite small, only 31 by 18 centimeters or 12 by 7 inches, painted on wood. The underpainting has a cold, gray-brown color. In some places, the brush strokes were very sharp, while other areas are soft and have delicate tone gradations. Specialists researched more than 300 samples of the Jan van Eyck's altarpiece. They discovered that to achieve the bright blue color of the painted drapery, the artist initially did two layers of an opaque mix of azurite pigment with flake white and completed the drapery with clear glazes of very expensive lapis lazuli. Such an approach makes sense from a financial point of view. The lapis lazuli pigment is more expensive than gold weight per weight. Therefore, using it in opaque underpainting would be a very costly exercise. Another example is The Portrait of a Man by Jan Masterat, circa 1475 to 1555 or 56, from the National Gallery in Prague. The X-ray photograph revealed that the complete artwork is done in transparent glazing. The portrait has a semi-transparent brown underpainting and was finished in glazes of flesh color. Microscopic research of the paint layers, taken during restoration from various masterpieces dated back to the 15th century and created by the old Dutch masters, revealed that the oil painting method in multi-layers was used. Most of the top layers were done in glazing with pure colors, without any mixing. However, the lower layers contained paints mixed with flake white. Rembrandt was a great master of the glazing technique. Many of his paintings feature shaded interiors filled with multiple warm spots of reflected lights. Rembrandt was using glazes for big backgrounds and then making impasto brushstrokes in lighter colors to depict lights and highlights. His paintings are renowned for deep, transparent shadows, done in glazes, bright accents of human skin, and reflecting light on jewels, draperies, metal surfaces, and so on. 
In the beginning of his creative career, Rembrandt, as many other artists of the Dutch school, was painting on white backgrounds. He used golden brown paints for underpainting. Later on, he began working on gray backgrounds, using dark brown color for underpainting. On top of an underpainting, he often used a la prima method, making the painting surface a tone or two lighter to finish the painting in one or several layers of glazing. The shadows in Rembrandt's backgrounds are often semi-transparent, while foreground objects are done in light, opaque paints. Such a combination gives a dramatic and interesting contrast between the figures and their environment. Another great master, Titian, is well known for the virtuistic use of glazing technique. Using a very limited color palette, he was able to achieve great creative results. Titian was using gray grise as an underpainting and then applied only three colors on top, white, black, and red, making the artwork almost complete in these colors. Dark draperies, hairs, and other secondary details Titian often did in a la prima technique. The missing yellow hues were added on top as yellow tint glazes. He applied his glazing with his thumb or palm. 30 to 40 glaze layers per artwork was his standard approach. Such a painting method is very apparent in The Virgin and Child. The child's body is painted in lighter tonal values to be finished in glazing. Later in his career, he developed another painting technique. He applied paints on a support with brushes, palette knife, and his fingers. Transparent glazes of that period's oil paintings did not obstruct the underpainting. The grain of a canvas sometimes shows through. Peter Paul Rubens is another great master renowned for his mastery of Flemish and Italian painting manner. His Flemish oil painting technique was based on brown underpainting. Lighter local tones were applied for mid-tones and mid-lights in bluish-gray color, after which Rubens did multiple glazes. Lights and highlights were done in opaque brushstrokes on top of glazing. There is another technique which complements the old master's methods and can be used on its own or in combination with glazing. This technique is called scumbling. Scumbling is the application of thin, opaque, or semi-opaque paint layer on top of dry underlayer. Usually, scumbling is done in a lighter color on a darker background. It allows the brightening up of dark areas without completely concealing them. Scumbling produces a hazy, opalescent effect. Many of the old masters were using the scumbling method. There are many paintings left from the past where opaque layers are thinly applied, so that the underpainting shows through just slightly. Similar to glazing, scumbling also works on an optical mix of colors, because paints do not intermix between layers, and under layers colors are showing through the top ones. Some of the old masters were using scumbling in portrait paintings. It softened the lines of a face and gives a translucent effect to skin. The fine artist has great control on how much underlayer can show through the scumbling layer. This gives a tremendous flexibility over tones and colors. Nice soft gradations can be achieved with this method. Scumbling usually is applied with a brush. The paint needs to be undiluted. Sometimes it is better to extract excess oil from the paint. To do so, oil paint can be squeezed out of a tube onto newspaper, a paper towel, or carton board. When the paper or board absorbs the oil from the paint, the paint is ready to be used for scumbling. The paint needs to be quite thick. This method resembles the dry brush technique. A small amount of paint needs to be loaded onto the brush. Apart from the old bristle or synthetic brushes, which work well for applying thick paint, scumbling can be done with palette knives, sponges, rags, and hands. Scumbling can be done by raking, dragging, or scraping the brush across the canvas and under paintings irregularities to give texture to a painting. When applied with a rigid bristle brush, stiff paint sticks to the top of the painted surface, revealing the canvas or impasto texture. This creates an illusion of the depicted object's materials and texture. Great effects can be achieved in painting by scumbling clouds in the sky, or foam on sea waves, for example. Scumbled areas are bright from the distance. Too much of scumbling can make artwork look too flat and opaque. Scumbling can be done with any oil paint. However, the best effects are achieved with the lighter and opaque paints. For example, Naples yellow is particularly suited for this method when placed on a darker tone. Scumbling only works over a dry underlayer. Applying paint over a wet surface will result in physically intermixing colors on a canvas or board. Some of Leonardo da Vinci's oil paintings featured scumbling used for highlights and soft gradations of tones. Rembrandt is also renowned for using this technique. His self-portrait shows how scumbling helps to achieve a great realistic effect of a skin. Another painting by Rembrandt, artist contemplating the bust of Homer, gives clues how this great master virtuously used scumbling to build up light areas of the picture. Here is the painting by French fine artist David Jacques-Louis. Madame Charles-Louis Trudain, which features the scumbling technique, is applied with perfection. 
I hope you've gotten a better understanding of the glazing and scumbling techniques. In the Web Art Academy course, you will see these techniques in action.